Now would you stand if you're able and join me to sing uh, hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for this beautiful day and our opportunity to come together and worship you today. Be with us through the coming week and bring us back together next Sunday. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Scripture lesson today is Acts 8, 26 to 40. An angel from the Lord spoke to Philip, At noon, take the road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way home from Jerusalem, where he had come to worship. He was a eunuch and an official responsible for the entire treasury of Candace. Candace is the title given to the Ethiopian queen. He was reading the prophet Isaiah while sitting in his carriage. The spirit told Philip, approach this carriage and stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you really understand what you are reading? The man replied, without someone to guide me, how could I? Then he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. This was the passage of scripture he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. Who can tell the story of his descendants because his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me about whom does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Starting with that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. As they went down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, water, what would keep me from being baptized? He ordered that the carriage halt. Both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water where Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Lord's spirit suddenly took Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip found himself in Azotus. He traveled through that area, preaching the good news in all the cities until he reached Caesarea. Word of God for people of God. Well, good morning. My name is Tyler Lawrence. I am the worship leader here at Asbury, and I'm also um, the uh, Team 4 leader, which Team 4 re- is reference to... I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous here. <laughs> team 4 is referencing the path. Um, and so if you are familiar with the path, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not, I'm sure that you could find somebody who knows a little bit about it. It's a very central part of who we are here at Asbury. So we have a number of special things happening today, um, in addition to me being here. I don't know if that's special good or special bad, but it's special nonetheless, and so I'm here. Um, And we also have this TV. I'm going to go ahead and take one second. I'm going to get this thing set up for us today, and then we're going to dive right into our time. Sound good? Okay. Lots of nods. That's good. This is not the disappearing act, by the way. I just want to make that clear. Okay. I'm back. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. <laughs> that was my laugh of triumph. I was really kind of nervous that wouldn't work just now. <laughs> okay, so we have a number of special things happening today, as I mentioned. Um, and before we get into that, though, I want to take a moment and pray. So if you would, bow with me. Father, thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you for the mercies that we see every day. Great is your faithfulness to us, to your people God, we thank you that you have made us citizens of heaven, that you've given us this ability to come to you uh, to receive that gift that you gave to us. We ask that you would um, speak to us today, speak through me, um, speak maybe even despite me. And we ask that uh, you would help us to continue to look to you for our next steps in our lives. And it's in your name we pray, amen. So one of the special things that we have going on today is indeed Memorial Day. Um, And this, to me, is a a day that's very special. I was raised to have the utmost respect for um, our servicemen and women, but especially those who uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice. And there are a lot of advantages, and there's a lot of things that I get to, um, to have and to enjoy because of the sacrificial love that our servicemen and women laid down for me. In fact, it says, uh, Jesus said that no, greater love has no man than this than to lay down his life for his friend or his brother. And so I would like to invite you to take um, approximately 10 seconds of silence to honor those who have fought and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. 
So one of the other special things that we have going on today is we are in a sermon series called With the Spirit. Um, How many of you guys have been enjoying this sermon series so far? Okay, hopefully I won't kill the momentum. So With the Spirit is is a sermon series that Nick is bringing us through the book of Acts, and he's talking directly about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit kind of gets... I don't want to say ignored, but sometimes he's not the centermost point of when we think of God. We, sometimes we think of God the Father, the Gandalf figure with the long beard. That's what I'm going for. Um, and then sometimes we also think about, uh, about Jesus, right? The Son of God. He's the second person in the Trinity, the Redeemer, the person who um, came, lived a perfect life, and atoned uh, and died rising again in three days. And that serves as this atonement that we get to take advantage of. But one person that we don't oftentimes think about, maybe until we need him, is the Holy Spirit. And so I'm I'm enjoying going through this sermon series. And Acts seems to be kind of one of those books of the Bible that I didn't typically spend a lot of time in beforehand. And so doing it now has been really enjoyable for me. So the first week we talked about how uh, uh, the Spirit is this co-worker, that he was there at the beginning with the creation, he was there with... Um, He was there with Jesus throughout his life and ministry and certainly through his resurrection. Amen. And and then the next week we talked about the inspiration and how the Spirit gives us this ability, this inspiration, this courage to stand up in the face of adversity. And this week we're going to be talking about another facet or characteristic of who um, God the Spirit or the Holy Spirit is, and that is this nudge, this ability for, for him to sort of come into our lives and push us either gently or not in a certain direction. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like for us to read through our scripture again. Uh, I'm going to bring that up, and as I mentioned, hopefully this all works. It does. Okay, here we go. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, it says this, an angel from the Lord spoke to Philip at noon take the road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road, and so he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way home from Jerusalem where he had come to worship. He was a eunuch and an official responsible for the entire treasury of Candace. Uh, Candace is the title given to the Ethiopian queen. He was reading the prophet Isaiah while sitting in his carriage, and the spirit told Philip, approach this carriage, stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah, and he asked, do you really understand what you're reading? The man replied, without someone to guide me, how could I? Then he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. This was the passage of scripture he was reading, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. Who can tell the story of his descendants because his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, about whom does this prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Starting with that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. And as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, water, what would keep me from being baptized? He ordered that the carriage halt, and both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water where Philip baptized him. And when they came out of the water, the Lord's Spirit suddenly took Philip away. Interesting. The eunuch never saw him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. And so Philip found himself in Azotus, and he traveled through that area preaching the good news in all the cities until he reached Caesarea. Now, we did just read that, and while that might seem repetitive to read it twice, I think it's really good because have you ever watched a movie a second time? Have you ever noticed a whole lot the more the second time? Now, this is a little bit more of a, it's a narrative, right? And so um, it's a little bit easier to sort of get the idea and the central theme as we move through the scripture, but I always find it good to read through it twice. Now, one thing I really enjoy about scripture is how much information can get packed into such a small amount of scripture. Have you ever noticed that? That sometimes you read a verse and you have to go back through and read it again. And if you're like me and you're (laughs) kind of tired and you're laying down trying to read at the end of the day, you have to read it about seven or eight times (laughs) before you finally understand what he was trying to get at. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start from this beginning and kind of look at our our different um, characters. And one thing I love about characters is that they develop or they don't. And I like seeing that that happen. 
And I also hope to outline a lot of the, uh, outline some of the information and how tightly packed it's in here. So at the beginning, an angel from the Lord spoke to Philip. So there's eight verses, or eight words in that first half of that verse. And there's already three people that have been talked about, distinct people. An angel from the Lord spoke to Philip. Now, as a side note, oftentimes, it's still being debated today, that the, the angel from the Lord is sometimes just God himself. In Exodus, it talks about, um, I wasn't going to go down this route, but here we are. Um, in Exodus, it talks about how the angel of the Lord came to him in the burning bush, but then later on, it refers to, to God in the first person. And so it's, it's an interesting thing. For the literal time for today, we're going to assume that this is a literal messenger, an angel from the Lord, and that he is speaking to Philip, three distinct individuals. Then he says, at, the, at noon, this is a specific time, take the road, and this is a specific road. And so he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way home from Jerusalem where he'd come to worship. Now, we know uh, that for the remainder of the story, he's known as, this, as the eunuch, right? And so he's our fourth character already. And he's responsible for the entire treasury of Candace, another person, okay? So we've, we're, we're in the first two verses of our, of our scripture today, and there's already five individuals, up to five individuals that have come about. Moving on, he was reading, he being the eunuch. Oh, I always have... I always spell a, a version of Enoch and eunuch together when I try to write that. So I wanted to bring up one point before we move on here. Uh, oftentimes in biblical uh, passages, the word eunuch is used, um, and, and so as uncomfortable as it might be to talk about this, um, there are three different meanings typically for, for a eunuch. And so if you read that word, there is... Uh, perhaps this meaning, the classic example, right? If you don't know what the classic example of what a eunuch is, I will let you figure that out on your own. The second one is that it is simply a trustworthy person. And at some point it seems to have become a slang, right? Uh, that that if, you, if you were known as a eunuch, it was just simply a, a trustworthy person. And then number three, that there is just simply not enough information. Sometimes we just don't know. Now, in this case, I think that we just don't have enough information about this person. That's a really bad arrow, but you get the point. I will say, however, that he is at the very least a trustworthy person. Why? Because he's in, in charge of a lot of money. <laughs> so this eunuch, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Looky there, we've got another person. I lost count here. So we're up at, to six now. So Isaiah is the sixth person. And while sitting in his carriage, the spirit told Philip, approach the carriage and stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah, and he asked, do you really understand what you're reading? Which I think is kind of a gutsy move, right? Like you're on the road that you weren't even going to be on originally, <laughs> and you see this carriage, and it's probably a fairly fancy uh, carriage, right? And then he runs up after hearing uh, somebody read from Isaiah, which is sometimes a difficult uh, book of the Bible to read. And back then, before you know, we actually had the physical Bible, I'm sure that it was even more difficult to try and understand. And I can almost picture Philip, like, I don't know if he was short or not, but peeking over the carriage and going, do you even know what you're reading? <laughs> and this guy, this eunuch, he turns around and he says, he says, without someone to guide me, how could I? So I'm going to ask you today, how many times have you felt like that? How many times have you felt like, without someone to guide me, how could I? We talk about the Holy Spirit, and one way that we oftentimes will talk about him is his ability to indwell us after we become Christians, right? And this idea stems from the Old Testament tradition where God would indwell the temple. And now because of, of Jesus' death and resurrection and that ability for us to become citizens of heaven, 
we have this ability to be indwelt with the Holy Spirit, to be the temple. Now, what was the temple? What's the purpose? Why would we want to be temples? Um, it's not so that we can look pretty, necessarily. Um, it's because we are the meeting place between God and humanity. Now, there's a lot of choices that we have day to day. Uh, <laughs> me thinking even just about um, my last week, about all the decisions and all the choices that I had. I think about, did I drink enough water? Did I drink too much water? Can you even drink too much water? Did I eat healthy this week? What can I do to even eat healthier? What is eating healthy? <laughs> because that's changed a little bit, right? And we're going to talk about change here in just a little bit. And those are just somewhat superficial things, like what am I going to wear this morning? I'm preaching. I want to look, I want to look fancy, you know? But then there's also these deeper questions of, I have a difficult situation that I'm trying to, uh, to deal with, and how do I deal with that? By the way, if you don't think I look fancy, that's okay. I don't think I do either. Um, I have a difficult situation that I'm dealing with. How am I going to deal with this? Or I haven't talked about God to... I haven't talked about God or my faith in God with a stranger in a while. Why is that? What can I do to change that? We're going to talk about barriers here in a second as well. But without someone to guide me, without that Holy Spirit indwelling us, the Bible can be something that's very difficult to understand. It's pretty fantastical, which I love, by the way. Then he, once again, this is the eunuch, he invited Philip to sit up, climb up and sit with him. And then they read this passage from Isaiah. This is another person here. This is the eighth person in our story today, our, our final person. Who do you think it is? Jesus. Now, many of you are familiar with uh, the Sunday school answer of children. If you don't know what the teacher's asking you or what the <laughs> what's the answer supposed to be, Jesus is usually a pretty, pretty good answer. So you guys nailed it. Really good. Really good job today. Okay, so yes, you are indeed correct. Survey says Jesus. That is who this passage is about. And if you really go through and break down this section of scripture, it's pretty amazing how accurate it is to the story that we know of as the crucifixion, right? We know that Jesus was sort of silent before the slaughter. I'm sorry, that he was led to the slaughter and that he was silent before its shearer. And in his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. It's pretty accurate. 700 years. That's the amount of time between Isaiah writing that and Christ coming and dying for us. And this is an example of a prophecy, which is just simply something that is known or told before it happens, right? It's a, work, a good working idea of what um, a prophecy is. 700 years is a long time. That's a really long time. Now, to give some scale or reference, perhaps, the USA is 246 years old. We've only officially been a country for 246 years. That's pretty amazing to think that Isaiah told about, the, he foretold about Christ 700 years. Now things have changed a lot in 246 years. Not because I'm 246 years old, but I know that because even just since the mid-90s, um, things have changed a lot, right? I mean, for instance, uh, phones. We, I made the joke earlier today that sometimes the, the phones that I remember in the earlier parts of my life, I won't reveal how, you know, I won't reveal how old I am, but um, sometimes the earlier cell phones used to look like it was like from a war zone, you know, you were trying to call mom, but you had to also radio in for an airstrike, <laughs> and then eventually they became flip phones, and then eventually they became uh, cordless phones that you could walk around freely without having that cord attached to the wall, right? And then eventually they became these super thin little bricks of computer that is more powerful than what we sent men to the moon with. Things have also changed, uh, like I said, with the internet. I'm going to try to play a sound for you and see if you guys remember this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I can remember, I can remember hearing that noise and my mom saying, get off the phone. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to, to talk to, to Caitlin for a little bit longer. Anyway, so things have changed. Cars have changed. Even in the last 20 years, cars have changed. And you probably saw, but the main mode of ground transportation um, 246 years ago was one whole horsepower, okay? He was, he was, he was just like iron, man, just really strong and, and happy to boot. If you fed him some oats, he was cool, you know? And I'm guessing that the cost of oats is still probably cheaper than the cost of gas right now. So we may be switching back sooner rather than later. <laughs> Things have changed. So then the eunuch asks Philip, tell me about whom does this prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Which is, I think, a very valid question. And starting with that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. And the good word good news or the phrase good news, we can also sometimes use as gospel. I'm sure you've, we've heard that word before, but it's simply the good news about Jesus to him. And as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, water, what would keep me from getting baptized? I think a good way to rephrase that could just simply be, what would keep me from taking my next step in my faith journey? Right? He had, been, he, had, he had witnessed from Philip this story. He had heard this story of, of Jesus and his sacrifice. And it says right here that he started with that passage right here in verse 35. I'm going to come over here now. It started with that passage, right? That means he went on. He used other passages to try and explain um, the story of Christ and the sacrifice that he made for us. So what, what's keeping you from taking your next step in your faith? Here's maybe even a somewhat apparent question, and yet something that we may have missed, just like I do oftentimes. What even is the next step in my faith journey? I think we'll, we'll answer some of those questions as we continue on. So this eunuch orders the carriage to halt. He and Philip go down to the water, and Philip baptizes him. He takes that next step. When they came out of the water, the Lord's Spirit suddenly took Philip away. Now, as you can tell, I am a firm believer in sound effects. I would like to believe that when the Spirit took Philip away suddenly, that it sounded something like this. <laughs> and that standing ankle deep, dripping in water, the unit goes, man, that was awesome. Phil. Phil. But he never saw him again. It says right here, it says that he never saw Philip again, but he went on his way rejoicing. Now, just as a side note, I believe that the Spirit wanted Philip to interact with this, with this Ethiopian man, with this eunuch, because he was a person of influence in his country. And so he could take this good news and sort of a top-down approach, perhaps. I'm not sure. What I will say is we all have a number of, of or I'm sorry, a version of influence whether it's being in charge of an entire treasury for a queen, or whether it's showing up um, a little bit early on Sunday morning to you know, run the tech for the church, or whether it's just simply being faithful day to day and living that lifestyle of uh, following Christ out loud. Philip found himself in Azotus, and he traveled through that area, preaching the good news, the gospel, in all the cities until he reached Caesarea. Now this map, hopefully you're able to see it, but I'm going to use my laser pointer right here. I'm going to show you that this scale down here says that from 0 to 30 kilometers, and that distance is approximately the same distance from Gaza to Azotus, right? Now, for us who are not super familiar with kilometers and the conversion, that's about 18 miles. That's a long way to go. <laughs> that's not something that he could have, Philip could have hid behind a tree and then snuck off to as it is, you know. That's an 18 mile trek. And he was just <laughs> there. Now, I think it's interesting because it says he ran up to the carriage. You remember that? You remember when it says that Philip ran up to the carriage? And do you remember when it says that he told him to leave at noon? So it's a specific time. He's on foot. He is able to run up and interact with this man, this Ethiopian man. So we can assume that he was walking. Now, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess that he probably encountered the eunuch earlier 
in the journey rather than later in the journey because it was time sensitive, right? And if you look here, I think this is so cool. I, I, I kind of nerd out a little bit on some of this stuff, but if he encountered the, the eunuch here or even really close to Gaza, that's about 18 miles. But the farther away you go and the closer towards Jerusalem you get, that distance gets longer and longer. And so that <laughs> may have been something more like 30 miles. I just think that's so amazing that the Spirit can choose to do that. So be careful. You never know when you're going to land 30 miles away. <laughs> that's not the message of this story. I don't want you to take away that. So there are a couple of things that we can learn about this story to help apply this to our lives. Because it's nice to know story, and it's nice to, to know that the Holy Spirit is capable of, of poofing people you know, up to 30 miles away, or more. I'm assuming he could probably do more. But there's something about the way that Philip handles this, okay? Number one, he was observant. So I'm going to say this to us today. We should observe, slow down, look expectantly. Because if there's anything that our world teaches us today, it is to speed up and to put your blinders on. Don't expect to see anything special. Life is not fair, right? Let's get going. The hustle is what life is all about. It's not. Slow down. Look expectantly. I find often that when I'm looking for God, I find him. Number two, he was open. Be open to God's prompting. Now, as a side note, a lifestyle or a posture of openness can sometimes be painful because God wants us he wants us warts and all. And presenting that, that imperfect part of who we are to the most perfect being in the universe is uncomfortable. But nevertheless, that, that sacrifice or that uncomfortability of offering our entire selves and being open with God is how he brings us through that brokenness in our past. And finally, obey especially in the face of perceived randomness. Now, the reason I say that is God's ways are so much higher than our ways. And so for us, mere mortals, right, it seems kind of random when God chooses to do something. How many of you have ever heard a, a small voice that was telling you or prompting you or nudging you to do something, and it was just really, really just kind of random? If you think back to Philip's story and, and to the portions where he interacts with the, with the Holy Spirit and with God directly, he just obeyed. It says, uh, it says, I want you to take this road, Philip. I want you to take this road, and I want you to take the, this road at this time. And the next thing that it says is, so he did. He just did. And then the next time the Spirit prompted him, it said, or nudged him, right? He said, he said, I want you to go run up to this carriage. And the next thing it says is, running up, he heard him reading. Obey, especially in the face of perceived randomness. William Cooper helped write this, uh, this old hymn. I actually am not familiar with the tune, but... I do know that this portion of the hymn spoke to me, and it says this. Then all my servile works were done, I righteousness to raise. Now freely chosen in the Son, I freely choose his ways. To see the law by Christ fulfilled, to hear his pardoning voice, changes a slave into a child, and duty into choice. This act of obedience sometimes is, is scary, like I said. And sometimes we don't even slow down enough to find out what God is even trying to get to us. But what I will say is that the word slave, talking about change again, right? The word slave has a different meaning today than it did back then. But nevertheless, we can go from a person who has to follow into a person that chooses to follow. From a slave into a child and a duty into choice. Pray with me. God, thank you for this time. 
Thank you for um, these people who are here. God, we ask that you would help us to um, slow down a little bit, to look around, to be open to you. And when we do hear your prompting, your nudging, that you would give us the strength to just obey, to listen to you and to your voice. It's your name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand if you're able and join me in hymn 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. seated. Let's pray. Father, we are here in this place today to hear from you, to worship you, to just simply be near you. God, there is so much happening in this world right now. There's conflict in in Ukraine and elsewhere in the world, certainly. There's conflict in our own country. There's tragedies that have, have taken place here recently. There's a lot of darkness that has crept into this world that you once called good. But God, we know that you have said, fear not, for I have overcome the world. God, you have most certainly overcome this world. And we look forward to the day where you come back to sort of bring us back to where we have always belonged, to bring us back uh, to Eden of sorts. Father, we pray for the people who are hurting today, the people who are neglected, the people who are lonely, the people who are hurting. And we ask that you would be with them and to make yourself known to them. Uh, There are people even here today watching online or in this room who 
are experiencing hardships of some kind, whether it be physical or, or mental or spiritual, and we pray that you would be with us as well. God, we also ask that in our good times that we praise you just as much as we need you in the hard times. That we lean on you just as heavily in the good times as in the bad. We pray for all of the men and women who um, have loved ones who have died serving this country. We thank you for their sacrifice as well. And we thank you for the sacrificial love that these men and women felt as they were preparing um, and as they were doing their duty. God, we ask that you would um, give us clarity in our, our church and in our lives. And we pray all of this now in the way that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is 601, Thy Word is a Lamp. Please please stand and join me. to thank you once again for joining us and before you go I wanted to read for you this short uh, this short scripture out of numbers the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace thank you
Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. I'm Hannah and these are your weekly announcements. Whether you're here in person or online, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to worship with you. Miss Heidi is moving away from